Hey guys, it's me again. So I just wanted to let you guys know that there is an event on my Discord where you can submit your own scary stories and maybe even win a cash prize. Check it out. I've never visited this board, so excuse any errors I make regarding board culture. Here is a story that is currently happening to me. I'll give a little background and then go green text. My buddy David has 800 acres near Galena, Alaska. We're up here building onto his house and fishing the nearby rivers on our off days. We're about 15 miles back on a gravel road that goes further onto BLM. There are a few logging trucks a day on the main road, but basically no traffic after the sun sets. The first day we got here together in my Tacoma 4x4. We unscrewed the plywood off the windows, brought our bags onto the porch. Got his generator started up and unlocked his various outbuildings. The air was stale and a little rank, like a dead cat, opened side door to kitchen. Opened the back door of the cabin and the windows that you could open. Didn't go upstairs, just let the place air out. Sat down on the porch to rest and quench our thirst. It's only been in the low 60s but the plywood was heavy. We sat there and planned our remodel, generally shot the shit, happy to be here. He fiddled with his bait and tackle and I admired the view from the front porch. Now I'm not really a ghost or spirit believer, but I saw something last weekend. It's real quiet and there was a lull in our conversation. Then out of the corner of my eye I saw somebody walk out the open kitchen door. I rotated in my seat to see who was there. I barely saw the guy turn the corner towards the back of the house towards the forest. What the fuck? David yells. Did you see that motherfucker? I did dude, who the fuck is that? David runs out to his truck where he has a Mossberg 590A. It's buried deep in our knack boxes and we had a bunch of shit to unload to get to it. We just throw shit out of the truck till we get the box open. We decide to search the rest of the house first, scatter gun in hand. We go upstairs. We look into the two bedrooms, under beds and everything. Nothing, no sign of squatters, animals, nothing. We both affirm we saw a little man with no shirt walk out of the kitchen door to our left from the main porch. We then go towards the back forest. The house and the pad they built it on has a thick gravel base right up to the forest. The forest floor is a thick mat of leaves, needles and duff and hard to track in. We looked all around and found no tracks. With the sun going down and all of our shit exposed, we decided going further into the forest was a bad idea. We both go back inside and close all of the windows, unpack our tools. Set up our gear in the lower two bedrooms. We regroup in the kitchen and start guessing who that was. Was it a squatter that was living elsewhere on the land and heard us opening up the plywood? Thief? Animal? Either way, we're two badass carpenters with guns and not afraid to throw down with some little fucked hard. We both go to bed. The next day we start setting up our tools and saws under tarps. We add the shotgun on a sawhorse nearby. Unloaded table saws and mitri saws, setting up sawhorses. Getting all the blades adjusted and going through the lumber he has on site. We brought cement to pour a post and pier foundation for his addition. We unloaded that and decided to go fish in a river about 300 yards downhill from us. He caught two trot right off that bat and I caught one about 20 minutes in. It slowed down after that and we hiked further upstream. That's where we heard rustling across the stream from us. It could have been any number of animals, so we stood sharp. We fished there for about two more hours and Dave started gutting the fish we had. We both head up to the house to wash up and fry some fish. After the last few bites of fish go down Dave stands up at the table. He says he left his bench made down there where he was gutting the trout. He grabs a flashlight and heads down there. He said he looked for the rock with the fish guts on them. Said his knife was there, but the fish guts were gone. He half jogged back to hide being scared. Later that night right after we both go to our bedrooms and shut off the lights. In the total silence I hear footsteps on the second story. I think maybe an animal or squirrel snuck up there. Try to ignore it. It gets more frequent, 
with the steps going away from me towards the staircase. Dave calls out loudly is that you up there? No, I answer, now to my bedroom door. We both open our doors at the same time and step into the main room. We bumped off of each other in the dark and both looked at the upper staircase. I saw what looked like a small boy, but his face was almost featureless and his eyes seemed pitch black in the low light. Dave yells, who the fuck are you? The figure slowly steps to the railing like he was going to answer us. Instead he let out an incredibly loud ear ripping screech. Like what you imagine a T-Rex would sound. It was so loud I covered my ears and stumbled to the floor in the dark. It was so loud it disoriented me. From the ground I look up at the second floor just in time to see it run back into the bedroom. Dave ran past me with his Mossberg in hand. Dave ran to the top of the stairs and turned the hall light on. He then ran straight into the bedroom and out of my sight. Boom, boom, boom. At this point I am beyond scared and almost physically shutting down. Like heat stroke or hypothermia. I knew that those gunshots meant that Dave may have just killed somebody. Dave reappears at the top of the staircase. He jumped out of the window and ran into the forest. He's like a deformed midget, his back was all fucked up and he was on his hands and knees. What? Did you hit him? If his legs are fucked up, how did he run away? I don't know but he jumped out and ran into the fir trees. We both went out the back door and turned on the exterior lights. There was no blood on the gravel, the smell of burnt powder was still in the wind. Was he up there all day? Dave says, he must have been, he probably snuck up there while we were working. So why would he go up there? Anything of value? Dave says, fucking nothing, old blankets and pillows. Dave do you have your game cam? Dave says, yes, it's in the truck. He goes out to his truck, while I watch from the front door. Again the enormous sound shatters the night. I imagined that the sonic crowd control weapons you hear about would feel like this. I instinctually covered my ears and let go a little pee into my boxers. Dave had dropped his gun and keys out of shock. He jumped into the Tacoma and locked the door. Keys and shotgun on the ground outside of his truck. I close the front door and stare at Dave through the window. He can see behind the house and I can't. His mouth is agape. Figure fuck this. Run out towards truck, grab gun, grab keys, and beat on window for Dave to open up. He turns to me as white as a ghost and opens the door. Frankly I'm too afraid to look up towards the back of the house and just rush back to the door with Dave in my arms. I slam the front door and start locking all doors and windows. Dave is pretty much in shock. What did you see Inigo? What did you see? Dave swallows deeply and says it was a stretched out dead guy that roared at us. He then rolls over and barfs on his floor. I am really starting to panic and experience tunnel vision. I never knew what that meant until that moment. I give Dave a rag and we sit on the couches. Who the fuck was it, Dave? A dead guy? Dave says, it looked dead and ashy, but it made that noise, and then made a scary face when it saw me. Its face moved into an evil shape. Let's leave dude. I can leave all my tools here. Let's drive into town and get a motel then? Okay. We grabbed out phones and wallets and the Mossberg. Dave insisted on setting up the game cam before we left. He wanted it on the front door, but I said let's put it out back on a tree to see if this thing comes back. We put up the cam on a tree directly behind his house under full gun coverage. We then jump into the Tacoma and peel away from the house. We drove back into town but everything is booked so we sleep in the truck. In the morning after breakfast, we drive back to his place. We pack up all of our tools as quickly as we can. We screw the plywood back up. Then with the engine already running, I go retrieve the game cam. I didn't get to download them until today when I got back home. I'm pretty sure what we saw was that little man in the center and a little left of the tree.